Listen, so much of what's taken place tonight has been about sound. And I believe that the Lord is saying that he's creating a sound that will legislate, that will shift things. And I believe it's a sound of revolution. We're in the, we're in the land of, of the American Revolution. There's another revolution that's at hand. There's another revolution that's at hand. The word revolution means to bring a radical and pervasive change in society and the social structure. It is one that often occurs suddenly. How many have been believing for some suddenlies in this region? How many have figured out suddenlies don't always happen suddenly? It's one that often occurs suddenly. These people have been praying. I'm telling you what. That there's been a buildup of prayer. The bowls in heaven are filled. And when the bowls in heaven get filled, then they start tipping out into the earth. Amen? Revolution, to bring a radical and pervasive change in society and the social structure. One that occurs suddenly and is often accompanied by violence. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, the kingdom of heaven. Did y'all sing it tonight? The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Another translation says, the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing, and forceful men and women lay hold of it. I want you to reach into the heavens and lay hold of it right now. Father, we pull it down right now in the name of Jesus. We pull down spiritual revolution right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree that just like the beginning of revolution happened, where we were freed from, as a nation, we were freed from a tyrannical empire... Lord, tonight, we are going to break free with a kingdom revolution. We are going to break free from a different empire that has been ruling this area, an empire spirit. And you're going to authorize us, Lord, to break free. We, th we decree right now that New York City is never going to be the same. We decree that your word does not return void. And that as we're legislating tonight, Father God, that things are shifting in a region. But I believe that we're coming into a season where we're going to see the, the quick manifestation, the suddenly manifestation of the things that have been prophesied. Amen. We're going to see signs in the news. We're going to see wonders begin to be performed that they can't ignore. Amen. And so I believe that there's that we're right now we're we're on that that precipice of a new kingdom revolution in this region. Amen. That is not just going to unlock New York. It's not just going to unlock New Jersey. It's going to unlock this nation. Amen. That's the vision that I saw 2 years ago. I believe that we're unlocking a nation tonight. So turn to your neighbor and say get ready for revolution. You can be seated. So, I want to honor the pastors, the intercessors that have been praying for this region. This is not, this is a tough region. But how many understand nothing's too big for God? And I want to just start out, I want to lay a little bit of a foundation just, to, just for you to understand um, theologically how nations and regions can actually shift. Acts chapter 2, verse 8, I mean, sorry, Psalms chapter 2, verse 8, I encourage you to read the whole thing. Um, but, it, but in verse 8, it says, ask of me and I'll give you nations for your inheritance. It literally means nations. It means people. It means Gentiles. Ask of me and I'll give you nations for your inheritance in the uttermost parts of the earth as your possession. Listen to it in the passion, it says, ask me to give you the nations and I'll do it. How many know that there's no city on earth that has more nations represented than New York City? How many of us are asking for those nations? We need to make that our prayer, asking for the nations. 
Listen, and this is about territory. Listen, there's some people that say God's just concerned about people. But I'm telling you, God's concerned about land. Let me say this. Psalms 27 says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's the land and all they that dwell therein. That's the people. God's concerned about land and God's concerned about people. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14, it says this. Then the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel... How many, how many think the Philistines have taken some territory? Do you know, the Philistines have taken it. The, you know, they're the giants. The Philistines had taken from Israel. The cities were restored to Israel from Ekron to Gath. And Israel recovered its territory from the hands of the Philistines. Now, Patricia got up here and started talking about the thief. I'm telling you, the thief has been busy in this region, and he's been taking towns and cities. He's not just been taking people. He's been taking land. And he's been setting up an illegitimate shadow government in this region. And that's why the United States is having a hard time breaking through because there's a shadow government. I'm going to explain in a few minutes what that means. But it's ruling in the land. It's, it is legislating. How many understand that Jesus told us that we were to disciple nations? But here's what's happened is because the church didn't do what we were called to do. Instead, the nations, the people groups discipled us. And the thief came in, and not only did it rob territory, it robbed our churches. Churches all across the nation, but especially in this region, are bowing their knee to the woke agenda. And there's no way the church can possibly legislate if the church is woke. But if the church is awakened, we can shift nations. Nations. 